So architecturally, this is how things are set up. We follow the recommendations by Droid where you split your cluster master data and query. Our overload and coordinator are in the same server. We split our middle managers into real-time servers and batch servers because of the large number of requests, uh, the large number of events we ingest that I showed earlier. Our batch middle managers are typically low. However, when we create a new data source and are backfilling it, we, we put this, uh, we increase them to help with the ingest. Our historical nodes are their own servers as well. And we use the same server to host both Pivot and our bro brokers. Now, in terms of our deployment, we do blue-green deployments. And, and, and use that for updating Druid, uh, except for our historical nodes where we run Ansible and we'll stop the service, do an upgrade or perform the operation you care about, and then start it running again. So in terms of deployment, we are deployed in AWS. Our historical nodes are I3s, our, real our middle managers are R5s, our master, is a C5 and our brokers are R5s. So here's, here's what the flow looks like. For real-time ingest, a member of the data stuff goes through these steps to actually get data into our Druid cluster such that it shows up in Pivot. They, they start by specking and creating a data cube. So they think about what are the measures and dimensions that they would like in this cube? Write those down, create it, backfill a little bit of the test data, and then validate if, if, this, if this looks good. Then they set up streaming. Uh, in this case, we use Kinesis, so our real-time events will keep flowing into the cluster, and it's important that they set this up before publishing it. And then backfill data back as far as they would like for the cube. Uh, verify the output looks correct in the output looks correct on our pivot and then publish it. Uh, pub part of publishing includes saying who has access to this data at Twitch. So if we go back to Alice, this is an example before, you can think of subscriptions as a real-time event at the company, whereby as subscriptions happen, events are getting published into our pipeline. And so if we want this to show up in Druid, we'd create a cube specced out with the same dimensions as the event and go through this flow to actually make it show up in our Druid cluster. So what does batch ingest look like? Uh, batch ingest is somewhat similar to real-time and just accept the, there's a lot more work that data stuff do to create what are the trusted data sources of the company. So initially they spec and create the data cube. Uh, this, this is more work than the real-time where it's a one-to-one -one translation. When creating a batch cube, the data analysts identify the data they care about, which can come from multiple tables at the company and then they use an in-house uh, SQL ETL framework that we have to create DAGs that help generate the data that would be going into this cube, uh, which is output into S3. So this, this, this can have, this can range from a cube from, can go as big to say a cube that has over 50 dimensions and over 50 measures uh, as an example. Uh, once, once they have that in place, they can backfill some of the test data, validate that the cube looks appropriate on the pivot side, and then go through the same flow. Uh, the only difference now is they're not setting up a, they're not setting up a real-time stream. So they would start by uh, backfilling and verifying some of the data, and then they would set up a recurring backfill. So we run our backfills on a daily basis. Um, and then they publish it and make it available to everyone um, at the company or a subset of users that they care about. So 
how does this work and what tooling have we set up to enable folks at Twitch to do this? So a, ver a very important thing for us while we were building this out was in as much as we were powering self-service for data stuff whilst they looked at the data, uh, my team also wanted to empower the data stuff creating cubes to be able to self-serve the cube creation. And so these, this is some of the flows that were put together to make this work. So data sources or your data cubes are stored in a Git repository. So when creating a new data source, uh, a member of our data stuff goes into the repo, writes their dimensions and measures into a JSON file, goes through a code review process, and merges their code. Uh, this, this triggers a Jenkins job, which will upload the changes as well as other scripts that live in that repo into an Airflow server that we run. And the Airflow server we have runs a couple of jobs to, to make this possible. Uh, for starters, there is an hourly job that, that is run, which will check for changes to our, for changes to specs. And then this will trigger, this, this, this will trigger script, which, which runs and kills any supervisors that were ingesting specs that have been deleted or creates new supervisors for new data cubes that have been added. So th this is what happens when a new cube is created and it's you're either backfilling it or you're continuing to ingest it. Uh, this flow would automatically trigger that, or you can manually run the script in order to kick it off for you. Additionally, there exists a backfill script, uh, which you can use to specify how far back you'd like to backfill data. So this is, this is a script that's often triggered by our data stuff when they're first creating their cube. And this kicks off an Airflow job which does our batch ingest by running a Spark cluster in EMR that will extract our files from our data lake and convert them into JSON with appropriate segmentation for ingestion into our Druid cluster. Uh, the, the last part of the flow is for real-time streams, our, our, da our data stuff can also set it up using some of the tooling we have. We have a Kinesis configs script, which essentially takes the commit from Git, looks at the cube spec, figures out if the cube is real time, and then will output the Kinesis configs that one needs to change to ask to get our data pipeline to forward events uh, to a Kinesis stream, which our Druid cluster would be ingesting. And we also have an in-house schema service uh, that allows our data staff to use a UI to actually input these Kinesis configs and make everything happen almost automatically for them.